And now it's time for Daily Duas. I do enjoy this time of the program um, with Brother Haider Jizani. Salaam alaikum. Welcome and thank you for it's joining us again. Always is a pleasure. Always um, good to see you. Always good to see you. As you know, Duas, integral part of Islam, the part of the show that I'm really getting into this. this, this uh, Lifting our spirits thing. up. Yes, 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 definitely. yes definitely. definitely. I mean, that's what the supplications are there for. The, the duas, the benefits of duas is to not only bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also to make sure that you have um, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you're asking a person for something you must really you know, um, know that this person will actually give you what it is so usually if you know this person is um, you know, um, a person who's not giving You'll never really go and ask him, oh, can I have... Because he's known to be not given. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known to be giving. And Kareem. And this is part of his names. You Absolutely. Know? Um, so you ask him. And, uh, you know... So uh, He goes, ask me and I'll give you whatever you need. Is there a tradition that says, um, even <coughs> ask for the salt in your food? You know, the ask. Course, because yeah. the etiquette is to <coughs> honour that he's our creator, he's the one who provides That's every definitely. sustenance yeah. that we have yeah. um, and we must rely on him for our needs of and course. then again it's up to him to um, so today please talk us through what are we so going to do. So this specific dua is very yeah, what beautiful. What do you have for us today? What dua do you have for us today? This what one's beautiful. One? Okay. Um, I mean well, they're all beautiful but each one has their own kind of beauty. Unique beauty, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this one um, is more of a um, kind of uh, you know it's, it's, it's very emotional so this one this one usually brings a tear uh, to a person's eye because it tells you um, it tells you oh Allah set me right for the religion that you have made a safeguard for me so you have made a, a guideline for me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the, to the way I live my life oh Allah make me see this guideline don't blind me from this blessing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people who have their blessings in front of them. They don't see it. But there is a blessing there. It's like it's not there if you don't see exactly. it though, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed light upon your life. He bestowed you a well-being, well health. He's, he's bestowed you a family. All these things are blessings. The, the, the reason why you wake up in the morning is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's because what you ask Him. You know, sometimes when you ask Him for something, it doesn't have to be physical. Oh Allah, bless me health. You can't see your health. Mm -hmm. We often say risk doesn't mean money, does it necessarily? No, no, no. Risk, mm -hmm. risk, risk is the part of your health. Yeah. Risk al afia. Oh Allah, bless me. Risk al afia. Afia is my well being. So uh, risk it has, doesn't have to be something physical, something to live by. Just to, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me patience against my enemies. Give me patience against those who hate me. Give me patience of those who stand in my way. As I worship you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are big things, man, because everybody, you know, in life we have adversities. Many of us can relate to that, whatever, in whatever sphere of our life, but there's going to be adversities and people that try your patience. Absolutely try your patience. Definitely. I really relate to that one. I and, know, and, and I know patience, many that try my patience. And you, and you get tested upon that mm -hmm. specific time when you have someone who actually comes and tests your patience. Allah yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this person to you. Yes. To test your patience. And patience is something very key in Islam. Rasulullah had patience. He had people throwing rubbish at him when he went, walked in the streets of Medina. Mm, mm, mm. Or they used to throw stones at him. Taif you know, and Taif, the rocks, course, the kids at Taif. We take, we take a lady like Taylor Zainab, the embodiment of patience. She's the main, um, main example Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa has blessed us with. This is another blessing. Absolutely. To have Sayyidah Zainab, to look at her patience. She lost her family, she lost everyone in front of her mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. Yet he, she stayed strong and patient. And grateful. And grateful. She said, Alhamdulillah, Allah has taken these from, of a sacrifice for me. I am part of the sacrifice. And I think when you look at the patience, um, if we can't go through that trial, then how would we exert our patience? How would we refine our patience? No mm. one is born with you know, mm. immaculate morals. We're learning as we're going along. So um, it's a blessing to have those people that are trusting it's, your it's, patience. It's definitely. almost as if the patience <clears throat> doesn't exist until yes. you're in that situation. Yeah. Definitely. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, so many um, life examples, so many things that has taken place. Yeah. Um, we can speak about Sayyidah Zainab, we can speak about Imam Kazim. Yeah. Imam Kazim was prisoned. Mm -hmm. And yet he had to remain patient. 
usually when a person who stays inside a room which is the same size as him standing or laying that's how big the room was and it's absolutely dark a, a normal being will go insane yeah, yeah he'll yeah. lose faith sensory deprivation complain. that is that will become complain. a clinical exactly. condition yeah, yeah. Yes. for the average yeah. person yeah you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with these examples that we take very lightly in our daily basis. Do you think um, in this day and age that we focus more on what we don't have because we're constantly looking at what others perceive to have a life of perfection or, you know, and that we're saying, well, I don't have what they have and I want mm. more. Do you think we live? Of course, you know, we live, we live in, a, in a time where there's people um, who work a lot more than we do, mm. who are blessed a lot more than we are. But you know, a blessing is not what you have in this dunya. No. A blessing is what you need to have in the akhirah. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. can have all the blessings in the dunya, but won't have the blessings of the akhirah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Sometimes, they, yeah, because they, they they've been given almost like they've been given their blessing now, but there's nothing there's nothing later waiting on. for them. Nothing, nothing on, yeah. waiting for them. But there's people who have their blessings now and later, but this is because of who they are, and what they've done in their daily basis. Allah gives you tawfiq in this dunya. Why? How? Allah gives you tawfiq in this dunya through these supplications, through praying towards Him. Making sure you're praying on time. You wake up for fajr, you give the effort, you give effort towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He'll give you. Tawfiq is brought through this. Mm -hmm. It's brought mm -hmm. through the teachings of Ahlul Bayt that we need to take on our daily lives every single day. Wake up, alhamdulillah, shukr, we awake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we go to sleep, Ya Allah, allow me to wake up tomorrow and serve you. Because we shouldn't take that for granted. No. There's definitely. no guarantee. No, that is not automatic. No one knows no. When, they, when, when their time is uh, up. And once their time is up, that's when... That's why I advise a lot of take care of your mothers. Wow. Take care of your mothers. Because once you lose a mother, you lose everything. Now, me, myself, growing up, I've made my mom upset a few times. But this is me being a young kid. Yeah. But she had the teachings of the Ahl al-Bayt to stay patient with me to bring me up with, with, with strength. And you know, when you lose, when you, I've lost my grandma very recently, and I, I honestly felt half of the pain of losing your mother, because the mother is, is, is the sweetness of your family. When you go inside your house and your mother's not there, she's on holiday, the house is a mess. It's a different place. There's a smell. Every day I come energy, home. Different vibe. Exactly, the candles yeah. are on, yeah. it smells beautiful, the house is clean, everything's chilling, everyone's smiling. Food is ready. Kitchen's <laughs> popping, yeah. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah, popping, yeah, man. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And but when you lose this kind of blessings, you know, you're like, oh, I should have done this and I should have done that mm. and I should have made a feel better and I should have taken out or took it. I should have done this. That's when you start regretting. This is the same as having any other blessings. You know, hold your blessings and be thankful but towards it. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's a perfect example to say about, you know, valuing our mothers, um, <coughs> parents, grandparents, you know, these are all blessings. Of and course. a mother's du'a has such an esteemed position. Um, so you obviously lost your grandmother a few years ago, I lost my mother. And I felt pe when she, I was nursing her and she was ill, people said, you know, even at this point, ask for her du'as. And um, so when she passed away, it felt like the cloud that was protecting me from the sun Faded had away. gone. Wow. And, and her mercy was, you know, she's always reciting the ours for us, playing Quran. So yes, definitely those, those blessings are everywhere yes, if yeah. we recognize them. And I think... And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values the mother's dua. Yeah. Dua al umm mustajab. She values the mother. Why? Because the mother is, is what, what... She feeds you the love of Ahlul Bayt. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your mother, your mother, your mother, then your father. Three yeah. times the mother. Because your mother's the yeah. one who goes through the pain with you. Your father's there, what? To teach you, to guide you in the right path. But your mother's the one to teach you and guide you through the love that she feeds you. Mm -hmm. Morality, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. she's nurturing through her actions. Mother, mothers give more than milk, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Through yeah. that milk is blessings. And she gives more. And blessings, and she gives more. Yeah. And yeah. she lives She lives to, you know, they're like, you upset her, she tells you no problem. I forgive you. Don't, is it, there's, a, um, there's a hadith, isn't there, that says, uh, when your mother loves you, then Allah loves you how many times more course, than what a mother course. loves you? And you think, you're, the mercy our mothers show us, like you said, we've all erred in our youth and, you know, probably upset them um, in our ignorance. But often, I think, when we look at our journey in this life, we are those ignorant that think we know it all but we, we really don't and as you the older you get you start to realize 
of your own ignorance, that you know, you know nothing. And, and when we're looking at these du'as, we're beseeching, we're beggars, because that is our status. You think that you know, without Allah's mercy to provide, to give us a love nurturing through these mediums that he puts on this world, our mothers, our, you know, um, we, where would we be? Um, you know, completely lost. Yeah. And, um, and, may, and may Allah grant you some pa you know, patience with your, what, what happened to you with your mother as well, inshallah. 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 So yeah, so we're talking about discussing this du'a. So this du'a is very beautiful. To uh, you know, um, it's it, it's basically Allahumma give me patience to what what's going to happen today. Oh Allah, um, um, I I I refuse any sinful meanings which will embark my journey when I leave my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this is kind of du'a is to kind of say Allah's du'a. Say, yeah, Allah, it's to talk all again. To, that, to reliance, that reliance, that reliance, that reliance. You're relying, yeah, you're, you're yeah. relying, you're giving your reliance towards Allah mm, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Ya Allah, I'm coming out in your safety. And I'm coming out in, uh, and I'm coming out and I, and I want to um, put away anything that comes in my way. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless me patience. Oh Allah, bless me, bless me a strong heart for me to fight against the bad winnings. So this dua is, uh, is, 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 is nice. <clears throat> so each verse is mustahab to be recited three times. You don't have to. <coughs> but the istahabat of, of the, of the, of the ad'iyah is like that. Um, <coughs> oh Allah, I seek refuge for your forgiveness from this wrath. We live in, in, a, in, a, in a very dark world where everything around us is, is a sin. Where we live... Where we live in a time where <coughs> it's very easy for you to kind of go into a bad path. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But inshallah, you know, through through the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala, through the love of Ahlul Bayt, too, uh, and they will help us too. Um, in that time, Allah subhanahu wa taala, they will, they will stand for us, and inshallah. this is what we live for. Inshallah. We live for their shafa'ah. And we inshallah. can't even take it for granted that we're in a particular lo geographical location in the world and we're safe from the. The influence of the yeah. shaitan because, the, you know, we're living in the time of the World Wide Web and it comes with its pluses, <coughs> but it comes with its minuses. So of there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of temptation and information and misinformation out there as well. So we have to be, yeah. wherever we are I think on planet Earth, we need to be vigilant, yeah. vigilant, vigilant. I think what the, when you talk about shaitan, we almost think of him as this, you know, this, the red horned, um, you know, two horned um, object, but he's actually, you know, the way he says waswas and how he comes to us in different ways. Yeah, and a little bit more subtle than a, than a red exactly. horned creature, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the more we try to stay affirmed to our <coughs> faith, he's coming in such yeah. discreet... He comes to you as a friend. Devious. He'll come to you yeah. as, a, as a family member. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. he'll, come, he'll come to you in different shapes and sizes, different different ways. So Does the translation of the Quran say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, <coughs> the shaitan, quoting shaitan, that he, I'm, a good, I'm your friend, I'm yeah. your advisor, I've come to give you good counsel. Yeah. It'll come to your mind mm -hmm. as your second, yeah. second mm -hmm. conscious. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what they say to purify <coughs> those thoughts that first come mm -hmm. into your mind because from that will be your intention and from that will be your action. So if that isn't clear and we're not, then we can't, you know, the cycle is, is going to be yeah. incomplete. So. It's almost like if you're trying to go in a straight line, if you just deviate just a little bit, then the location where you end up, from where you intended to where you actually end yeah. up, is going to be well off once you travel yeah. some distance. So, so would you be able to recite yeah. yes, this beautiful, <coughs> this beautiful dua for us? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma aslih li dini. الذي جعلته لي عصما اللهم اصلح لي دنياي التي جعلت فيها معاشي اللهم اصلح لي اخرتي التي جعلت اليها مرجعي اللهم إني أعوذ برضاك من سخطك وأعوذ بعفوك من نقمتك اللهم إني أعوذ بك لا مانع لما أعطيت 
ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين So this this part of this beautiful dua اللهم اصلح لي ديني الذي جعلت لي عصمة اللهم fix my religion my 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 belief in your religion which you have blessed me as 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 a asma asma is a uh, it's, it's a pride it's a blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when when a when an imam or a nabi becomes masoom mm-hmm. he has his asma and this asma is a blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means so, when you, so when you say asma and you say pride not kibr this is something different oh no this is completely different asma when a person is masoom he means a sinless mm-hmm. infallible mm-hmm. You give me, you gave me this piece of infallibility towards your supplications, oh Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And so, Allahumma aslih li dunyaya allati jalta fi maashi. And then, Allahumma fix the the the, the dunya that I'm living in, mm-hmm. that you made it my lifestyle. Thank you for this blessing. So we wake up every morning. Our day daily routine is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has yeah. blessed. blessed that us. is a gift. That is a gift. Truly, yeah, yeah, is a gift. Yeah, yeah. This du'a is beautiful. And uh, you know, uh, Nabi Muhammad used to recite this every morning. Nabi Muhammad, you, you know, see something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given them that we are never, we won't ever, to, we won't ever be able to do is they used to, they used to, uh, I mean, they say sleeping is ibadah. Yeah. But where did you get the time to have all these adayah? When you wake up for Fajr, mm. you know, Nabi Muhammad used to do this. Uh, uh, there's narrations that Nabi Muhammad, before he before he prays, there's a set of uh, uh, supplications you read. After he uh, in between, there's another uh, set, of, and after he uh, after he finishes, just before he goes back to sleep, or maybe they don't go back to sleep, they carry yeah. on with the ibadah. Well, there's du'as for sunrise, so I presume there's a whole routine. Mm-hmm. So, so in imagine. terms of this one, was this? Um, this is what time is the best time to read this du'a? So this one hasn't got a specific time. This one is is uh, is is okay. The Mr. Abad Mala, the Rasulullah used to uh, used to recite a fajr. Okay. Well, of course, this is the type of du'a you can recite any time. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be for fajr. The mustahab of it, mm-hmm. the time of it, it's just after fajr. Okay. After okay. you've recited it, you're gonna go about your day. <coughs> this is the type of du'a you recite. Thank you so much for the recitation today. Beautiful girl. Um, that's all we've got time for. Uh, next up, we have Sister Masuma Jaffa with hijab and etiquette and the safety of.